The Muslim Brotherhood is an 84-year-old organization founded by Hassan al-Banna um, in Ismailia, and its, its long-time aim was to establish an Islamic state in Egypt. And now that it's elected Mohamed Morsi as president, it's much closer to that goal, or, or much closer to being able to achieve that goal than it's ever been. But they say that he quit. He's not part of the Muslim Brotherhood anymore. I mean, no one should take that claim at face value. Mohamed Morsi, for at least the last five and possibly ten years, was the enforcer in the organization. What that means is that when any leader would try to veer from the organization's dogma, he was the one who typically wedged them out. I mean, he's also said that 9-11 could not have been done by al-Qaeda. This is a person who, like many Brotherhood leaders, uh, is, is involved in 9-11 revisionism. Nobody should think that his election won't cause major challenges for U.S. policy in Egypt. He is a deeply hostile person towards U.S. interests, and his 9-11 revisionism is only one example of that. Should America be concerned? America should be very concerned. What's basically happened in Egypt right now is that a deeply theocratic and secretive organization has overtaken much of the state. It's won the presidency. It's previously won the parliamentary elections. Um, briefly, the Muslim Brotherhood is simply the only organized group in Egypt. It has a nationwide structure that allows it to direct its followers that are scattered throughout Egypt to do whatever the organization requests of it, whether that's organized for elections, attend protests, do social services. It is the only really potent force uh, for politics and for social work in Egypt. And for that reason, it's going to be extremely effective at pushing a theocratic and very hostile um, ideology. He's going to try to uh, push against certain American interests, such as, for example, the peace treaty with Israel. He has suggested, and other Muslim brothers have suggested, they might put the treaty to a referendum. They might try to use the issue of Israel for populist gain. But more importantly, um, Mohammed Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood have said they will not have relations with Israel. And the question is, what happens if there's a crisis? There's a very tense situation right now in Sinai, where 30 approximately Bedouin tribes are at war with each other, and that instability has been spilling over into Israel. The only way to resolve that tension in the event of a crisis is by having communication between the newly elected government of Egypt and the government of Israel. And if the Muslim Brotherhood refuses to do that, it's going to be very hard to calm tensions in the event of a crisis. Who's going to be running Egypt? That's really the question right now, because although Mohamed Morsi has won the presidency, power still remains in the hand of the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, which is the junta that's ruled Egypt since Mubarak stepped down last year. However, no one should underestimate the importance of the presidency as a bully pulpit for the Brotherhood. He is now, Mohamed Morsi is now the president of Egypt, and that's going to allow him to the very least use his influence to push Egypt in a very hostile and theocratic direction. We have to really watch who he appoints to his cabinet. He said that he wants to appoint a technocratic uh, cabinet. However, when it comes to things like the Ministry of Islamic Endowments, the Ministry of Education, these are domestic issues that the Brotherhood has always been very invested in. And it stands to reason they will appoint people who will push their agenda in the mosques and in the schools. In fact, just yesterday I was speaking with one of their spokespeople who said that uh, they want to separate genders for students after the age of 15. They say that at that age, men and women should not be educated together. So while perhaps parts of the government will be technocratic, other parts will be definitely ideological. A lot has changed the last 18 months, but one thing that has been the same 18 months ago in Top Rear Square and today is that people are focused on domestic issues, the economy, getting jobs. And the United States should make sure that Mohamed Morsi focuses on fixing those things. If he focuses instead on foreign policy, on revising the peace treaty with Israel, it will be because he chose to do so. And America should make sure that he does not choose that by saying to him very bluntly, we're willing to help you on domestic policy, we're willing to help your economy. However, if you turn against our interests, you will not find a friend in the United States. I really think the peace treaty with Israel is where the greatest complications will occur because for many Egyptians, the peace treaty is an imposition, which is frankly crazy because the peace treaty has saved lives. And one of the important points that I think U.S. foreign policy needs to emphasize is that the peace treaty is not a favor that Egyptians do to the United States and Israel, but something that has prevented perhaps thousands of Egyptians and Israelis, of course, from dying in war.